what we did is that, uh, well, the rationale is uh, first, there is a big unmet need uh, for patients that have myelodysplastic syndromes and have thrombocytopenia. There's currently no FDA approved treatment uh, for this subset of patients. And about 30 to 60% of the patients present with thrombocytopenia at diagnosis and uh, platelet transfusions uh, have short therapeutic effects and uh, can trigger also transfusion reactions. Uh, in preclinical data, uh, we have seen that l trombopag can reverse antimeric chiropoietic effects of lenalidomide in MDS patient samples. And uh, actually, lenalidomide is approved uh, in MDS with deletion 5Q, uh, where it induces remission uh, and transfusion independence in about uh, half of the patients. And also in patients that are non uh, 5Q deleted uh, in all comers, it actually also. Um, improves uh, this uh, transfusion dependence in about 25% of the patients. So being that lenalidomide has been uh, already worked in this uh, subset of patients relation 5Q and also 25% of the patients that are non relation 5Q, uh, we decided to do a combination. Why? Because lenalidomide causes significant thrombocytopenia and we saw that it's a limiting step uh, in giving this treatment in some of the patients. So as we had seen for clinical data that l uh reverse and to make chiropractic effects of lenalidomide, we said we should do this in, in combination. This was a phase two uh, multi-center open-label trial that was conducted at uh, Montefiore Medical Center, Albert Einstein College of Medicine, uh, the University of Kansas, and Sarah Cannon. It had two arms. Arm based on uh, platelet count. So arm A uh, were patients that had more than 50,000 uh, platelets at baseline and arm B patients that had less than 50,000 platelets. Uh, arm A, they were treated with lenalidomide starting at 10 milligrams daily. And if their platelets went below 50,000, then they were switched to l pack until their platelets increased again to about 50,000 and then they were restarted on lenalidomide. If they fell to less than 50,000 a second time, then uh, l trombopag was resumed. And once their platelets were more than 50,000, lenalidomide was added. So they were on both medications from now on. And uh, RMB, like I mentioned, uh, were play patients that had platelets less than 50,000, and they were given l trombopag starting at 100 milligrams. When their playlist went up more than 50,000, then they were switched to uh, treatment as in arm A. Additionally, I have to mention that uh, during study, uh, we saw some patients that had uh, bilineage responses on l trombopag alone. So those patients were permitted to stay on l trombopag alone. So ultimately, uh, we ended up having... Uh, three different groups, uh, one group that was treated with lenalidomide only, one group that was treated with l pack only, and one group that was treated uh, with either a combination of l pack and lenalidomide or who was given those uh, both drugs sequentially. We had uh, overall, uh, in the intention to treat population, the overall response uh, in the overall population was 35%. Uh, for patients that received uh, l trombopag and lenalidomide, it was 33% overall response rate. Patients on the lenalidomide arm uh, only had a 38% overall response rate, and patients uh, on l trombopag, uh, 33%. Uh, additionally, uh, I have to mention that uh, patients that were on l trombopag alone uh, we saw on the evaluable patients that 29% of them had uh, bilineage responses and 35% of them had uh, hematological improvement in platelets. Additionally, the patients that were on the combination or were given both drugs sequentially, uh, the overall, uh, uh, sorry, the bilineage responses uh, were 14% and uh, the improvement in platelets, 21%, and uh, RBC transfusion independence, 21%. MDS, um, especially in patients that are low and intermediate risk, uh, we have limited, um, we have limited uh, medications that we can give them, especially in patients that have uh, thrombocytopenia. It is encouraging to see that uh, patients that were on l alone 
uh, they had around, uh, like I mentioned, uh, around 30% increase in, uh, in, in platelets. And also that we saw that El Trombopag alone uh, can give you bilineant responses. So it not only increases platelets, it can only increase neutrophils and it can only uh, increase uh, hemoglobin in these patients. And some patients had CRs as well. Um, like I said, it's a, an unmet need in this patient. Uh, another thing that uh, it's important to mention is that uh, there have been pre exist uh, there have been uh, some concerns that El Trombopag uh, can transform uh, this MDS into AML, and we did not see that uh, in, in our phase two trial. So I believe that this is something that uh, we need to take into account and that uh, this is an option for patients that have thrombocytopenia. Currently, uh, we don't have uh, anything uh, planned right now, but um, we would definitely want to continue this. We would uh, like to continue uh, with l uh maybe doing a, a, a bigger study and... Uh, because, and I guess that the the next steps are also looking into another in, uh, and looking into other TPO receptors, uh, TPO receptor agonists uh, that can that can also be tested and and see how the responses are in uh, MDS.